Here we are. We finally meet, we four. I was telling Pontus that of everyone who I know who is a big Angelina Jordan fan, he's usually a male over 50, and he probably <laughs> he likes Angelina Jordan about 6,000% uh, more than his partner. And I know one couple where that is the exception. And I said, maybe we should get them onto our podcast <laughs> and have a chat. And so that is your introduction to fame, Carrie. That's pretty funny. <laughs> also, you, Carrie, you were the first one to really get Angelina. You were the one introducing Angelina to James. Yeah. Wasn't that true? This, this is very true. It told us the story, and, and we were great oh. to, to get, have you tell your story, how, how it's different. So I believe it would be right on point, his and mine, no different. And one night decided to just go down a rabbit hole and <laughs> I'm in love with blues and jazz and all genres, but that really is what I like. The blues yeah. and the jazz. I initially put in SRV for Stevie Ray Vaughan, whom I love. And then it just kept on going further and further one night and looking under blues artists and jazz. And that's my favorite. And gospel and led me to Mahalia Jackson. And then from there, Ella Fitzgerald. I'm a big Presley fan. And so I also love SRV, C.B. Ray Vaughan. So all that conglomerated led me to this little girl, probably about five or six years old, and she was the cutest little thing. Her hair was all a mess. She had like one tooth coming in. One tooth was down. She could hardly get the words out, but she really tried pronunciating. And I don't even remember the song, but I believe it was on Norway's Got Talent. And I was like, oh my gosh, is she being channeled? Is this for real? And ever since then, I had asked of James to please check this little girl out. You're never going to believe it. Like, she is singing Presley. He goes, I don't know. He says, this is a little girl. He says, I'm not going to watch. I'm sure she's good. I believe you. But I said, no. So one night I had said to him, listen to me. Just give me your five minutes of undivided attention. This is like an, a year and a half later. And I said, let's <laughs> sit down and just take a peek. And he said, she's really good. And she's too cute. She's adorable. Like she had no shoes on. She looked angelic almost because she had her flower crown on and she was just so natural and so genuine. And that's what I got. I got that genuineness and her ability at her age to perform. It was really not common to see that kind of confidence. And she seemed to have some sort of a commune with the audience. I really believe in some level that she's channeled somehow, some way, by someone. It was just raw talent. You so you say to yourself, there's natural born talent. But then when you go into the studio and you watch her and you see what she's portraying when she's on stage is well refined and it's well defined. And there's a lot of rehearsal and there's a lot of practice. And yeah. she seemed to have a command that didn't appear as if she was seven or eight. Like what? Yeah. So all that combined has just led me to really thinking that she is something else. And uh, therefore James watched and he said, this is fantastic. She's really unbelievable. Yeah, that night changed my life. And she sat me down and I, I, she was just like, okay, she's putting it softly. Carrie's putting it very gently. She was like, okay, Buster, <laughs> basically. <laughs> she said, there's a chair, sit in it. You're going to watch this little girl with me. I, I, the girl that I've been sending you in the links. And uh, as you I often ignore email. <laughs> I especially ignore email that has like little girls singing the blues, good heavens. And uh, it took me a year and a half to sit down. And she said, Buster, you're sitting down, you're listening to this. And boy, did I ever. 
And man, so, I was glued to that chair, man. And so we've watched her evolve. And I think it's like watching a family member grow yeah, right true. in front of you. Yeah, yeah, true. Like she's grown from this little child to this beautiful young woman. Wow. And she still blows my mind. I was listening to her sing Adele's latest song. And right, on, on Alan's video. It was yeah. wonderful. It was simply yeah. wonderful. It's cute watching her experiment with her makeup and her eye color. Personally, I think her brown eyes are superb. At her age, she's going to experiment with her makeup, her hair, her eye color, whatever. But one thing that stays true is her voice. And it keeps getting better and better. I, I think Angelina Jordan is to singing as a mother is to a baby. It's just so natural and it's so instinctive. And you don't need to read a book to know what to do. It's all right there. You're right. And that's what I saw when she was on stage as a little one. You don't have that commitment just naturally. She did, yeah. But she did. Yeah. And it wasn't coy. It was genuine. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what the judges were saying, but I know it brought them all to tears. So, James, I, I have the $64,000 question for you. <laughs> was it ever the moment where if you didn't like Angelina Jordan, then the engagement was off? No, maybe it was a trust issue. I think that's why I finally sat down. Yes, I think you have a point. Our our relationship is actually based on music because we met out at a night uh, where we were listening to music. And in fact, we closed the place down that evening. And we were the last ones other than the cook and the waiter. And when we left... We found that our cars were the only ones left in the parking lot, and we were parked next to each other in the parking lot. And when we reached our cars, we turned on the vehicles, and we both had the same CD in our players. Wow. And we knew. It was Stevie Ray Vaughan, who's a and blues guitar player. the same yeah. song, which it, was completely... And the same song. Sometimes in life... You you have to be ready to read an omen. And that's a really big, great, obvious yeah. omen. And um, as Angelina yeah. Jordan would say, the, the writing is on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah. It was. It is. So for a year and a half, Carrie was sending me these links, and I was pretty much ignoring them, especially after that first <laughs> one where she sent me Angelina performing the Elvis song, It's Now or Never. And it was the first one, and Angelina, God, I'm sorry to have to say this, but she messed up the lyric. The only time I ever even heard her mess up a lyric, ever. And I was like, oh, click. And I never wanted to go back until she sat me down. I know. Mm -mm -mm. And then life was different, yeah. But it is a, a challenge when you have the chance to introduce somebody to Angelina. It's a challenge to actually, how should I go about this? Which song should yes. I pick? I'm a bit scared because uh, I don't want it to fail. Maybe I don't have the, the same kind of uh, persuasion powers that you have, Carrie. <laughs> Some of my friends, I can't just uh, put them in a the chair and say, listen here. We had uh, times where I've sent uh, a link or two to uh, one of my friends and, and they've just said, oh, oh, I'm not into that kind of music. And I'm just, mm. what kind of music? She does all kinds of music. So nowadays I basically, I don't tell them to listen to anything specific. I'm just say, okay, you should, you should look up Angelina Jordan if you're interested in great vocals. No, that's just what I do. It wasn't so much persuasion as it was just a evolving. I had shown him when she was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that had a lot to do with it. And as yeah. she evolved as a singer, and she just didn't come on the scene as this young adolescent and right. young woman, well, she can be a little disarming. And I think for people who have shared with them the involvement from when she was young up until today, I really love the fact that she didn't have any shoes on. When you look, you're like, but why? But there's a beautiful story to that. I know. We were telling it yesterday. And that, and that in and of itself is, wow, she's not just so beautiful outside, but she's really beautiful, <sighs> kind-hearted inside who happens to have this enormous talent. So it's something that she's worked on, and she's only getting better. And I love Adele. And when I heard her sing Adele's song, I was like, what? No. <laughs> 
And she did it again. I, I made a video recently and I said, maybe life imitates jazz. Because the nature of jazz, it's you can plan life, but sometimes you just have to go with the flow. And you don't know what's going to happen in one minute's time or 10 seconds time. And that's exactly what it's like listening to jazz. And this is what I've learned from listening to Angelina Jordan. It is so inventive. It is so unpredictable in the best possible way. And because of that, I actually think life imitates jazz. That's That's true. I love the blues. And she's singing the blues. Mm -hmm. There's pure emotion behind it. And she takes her time. Her timing is just perfect. She doesn't run through. She breathes. And you can feel the emotion and see it. And when she takes a breath, you're like waiting for her again to say like the next verse. I I think that's something which is not really mentioned very much. And that Angelina Jordan, when she's singing, she knows how to wait. For example, when she starts singing, I have nothing, you expect her to begin the song about one full second sooner than she does. And she does that very, very often where you're expecting her to start thing, but she just waits. And that actually adds to the impact and the effect. It's subtle, but it's really profound. When she does her covers of iconic songs, you actually hear the lyrics in a totally different manner than you used to. It's a storytelling not seen in so many other artists. I mean, it's really like you're listening to the lyrics for the first time in some cases, uh, especially when she did the, uh, the cover of Michael Jackson's Billie Jean. I, I really sensed the lyrics there for the first time with the Michael Jackson song. True. He's a, a genius in his own right. But uh, when it comes to storytelling, I think Angelina has the knack for it that uh, no other artists have. She can take a phrase and just draw it out and keep you waiting for the next just by her timing and her ability to breathe and to just slowly gather you into her voice it's just uncanny it really is and i know that what we're witnessing has taken training and time and we're seeing the end result. What's really cool is when you go behind the scenes and we're able to do that and see her in the studio and her ability to keep on point and to have a good sense of what's going on, not just with herself, but with all the other as well that are making this awesome music. It's all coming together. She portrays this is effortless and it's not it's not it seems though but it appears like that way and that's part of the beauty over the course of time mm. uh, she's developed she will continue to grow and her voice will continue to evolve and her style and her manner and the way she presents herself so i'm really on board angelina all the way it just occurred to me you're the first um couple we've ever had on our podcast but Maybe what we should say, if any people listening to this are a counselor for a couple, maybe if couples aren't getting along, maybe they should sit down and listen to Angelina Jordan together. And that's part of a joint therapy. And they can just completely change their day. If, if they're about to have a row, they listen to Angelina Jordan together. Yeah. And- yeah. She like my a- funny Valentine. This is the photo that we have on our computer. Can you see that, guys? It it promoted her Christmas special, and it has her brown eyes. First, it's her choice. She can do whatever she wants to, and I'm fine with it. But what I'm guessing is she's actually creating her persona. A lot of artists have, of course, a private persona and an artist persona. And I think that is uh, part of what she's... uh, trying to find the eye color and 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 i i think she's great at the clothes and outfits and everything mm-hmm. she has really good eye for uh, great uh, fashion design angelina jordan has never worn the same outfit twice other than the bohemian rhapsody yeah. outfit. 
And in, in that sense, she's like a supermodel because supermodels True. never ever wear the same outfit twice. I also think that they stitched the outfit together. Angelina and her grandmother actually physically were sewing the outfit together. And that's another whole nother level, yeah. Bonding. It's wonderful bonding. It's intergenerational, and her grandfather died. It was, like, very obvious that she was affected. And the song is just unbelievable. It brought tears to my eyes. And I just thought yeah. about my own father passing. Yeah. It just touched me. She has the ability to just touch yeah. people in a oh my. very personal yeah. way, if you allow it. There's the key right there. You have to be open to it. Yeah. That's really interesting because some people are completely closed and some people are very open yeah. and usually those are the super fans of Angelina Jordan but it's the people in between it's the people who are slightly open to it and that po possibly can be the most dynamic moment where they can turn or they can have a sea change they can have a major shift in how they experience. If they're a little bit open, maybe then the floodgates can open. That, that's interesting. I'd just like to add something. Carrie and I don't have any children of our own together. And I think that Angelina Jordan fills a void for us that way. Because we're able to talk about her in a loving way. And I think that Carrie may, may have mentioned that earlier, that we do adore her that way together, that we love her. In a way. We have the word paternal, and Angelina brings out the paternal right. instinct. But we need an, another word because we need the word grandpaternal of people <laughs> who are grandfatherly towards her. So I yes. think we have to invent the word grandpaternal. James, you have a wonderful story to tell us because uh, a lot of people, when they talk about Angelina Jordan and they talk about her as an empath, where she has empathy oh, yeah. for... Um, yes. other people and she really understands the nature of empathy but uh, why don't you tell us a story yeah. of how you experience yeah. empathy i don't have much control over it but i do know that my ability to be empathic for those that i love those that i live closely with and is very real and what I, i'll experience sensations pain illness and uh, sometimes even the death throes of those who are close to me. It's a, a physical sensation that I'll experience that others are experiencing as well. The latest version of that is a fellow that I work very closely with ripped his muscles and tendons in his shoulder, in, in his right shoulder. And so I would feel it in my shoulder terribly. And I was wondering what the heck it was because I just didn't re recall doing anything. And so I have to think half of what I'm thinking is, okay, is it, is it an empathic thing? And so I was asking around and I learned that in fact, yes, torn his muscle. And in fact, he got surgery over this past weekend. So it was just confirmation that yes, that was another uh, example of this empathic experience that I have to live with. But I think the story that I was telling you was fairly extreme. It was a few years ago, and I was playing with the band. And this moment, I just collapsed. I did just drop to the floor. I had this extraordinary pain in my midsection toward the center in the left. And I had just dropped to the floor. And the band just stopped playing. Everybody just gathered around me and picked me up off the floor. And... I had come to just going, I, I really don't even know what happened. Mm. And uh, the very next morning at the radio station, this other fellow walked in and I was walking with a cane going, oh my God. Uh. And he's like, wow, what happened to you? And so I told him and, and he said, oh, you too? And I'm like, what do you mean me too? And he goes, oh, this other guy, blah, 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 had an abdominal aneurysm last night at approximately such and such a time. Oops. And they brought him to the hospital, and he's okay and all that. But, and I guess, in fact, this fellow and I work very closely together. This is something that, that I experience fairly regularly. So oftentimes, I, I don't know whether it's my own ailment or someone else's. I can tell you the first time that I experienced this, and I was sure that, in, in fact, it was someone else's experience, is when someone else died. And I ex experienced that. I was working in New York City. I was in an office down in Soho at a marketing company. I was in some shelves looking for some promotional materials. 
And I had the most un unbelievable pain and seizing feeling in my torso. It was a, a sensation I'll never forget. I'll never forget the day. I'll never forget the moment. I'll never forget the time. It was nearly unbelievable, the sensation, and that I lived through it. And that evening when I got home, I called my mom and she had told me that our, our next door neighbor had died of a heart attack. He was chopping some wood across the street and he had died of a heart attack at that exact same moment. And he and I were very close. He was a fellow that I really looked up to and he liked me very much. And he was a fellow that I learned a great deal from. And much of what he and his wife left behind, I have here in my own home with me. That's how close we were and how much I respected him. It doesn't surprise me that if I were an empath, that I should have felt something from him at that moment. That's a great story, James. Two things I want to say. One, you've just given us the title for this podcast, Feeling Empathy. And two, yeah. when you describe it, some people might think that it is a disadvantage to be like that. But I actually mm. think it's an advantage to be like that because your feelings are heightened and your feelings are in technicolor. It is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Life is about heightened emotions. This is what life is. Life is the extra mile of going down the rabbit hole into empathy. And I used to know a psychic, and she generally was psychic. And she thought of it as a tremendous burden. She wished mm. she was not psychic. And so what you are describing, James, I think in its own way is a gift. Angelina Jordan, as an empath, she uses it very much as a gift to give to others. But when you have that extra dimension inside of you, very few people have that. The women in my family are gifted psychically. So in my family, it's known as women's work. So <laughs> it was hard for me to take seriously. There are a couple women in my family who do it for a living. And so mm, it was something that I tried not to take very seriously or train myself to learn or take classes in and things like that. So. It was something that I just put aside. But in later years, I, I thought maybe I'd take a little closer look at it and take it a little bit more seriously. Come yeah. off my high horse. And... For me, this feels like it's related to the way that people are affected by Angelina in the way that a lot of people are, are just amazed of how can she make me feel this way? And I think that uh, what you're describing and the abilities that you have, although very rare and uh, perhaps extreme, I think all people have that uh, kind so. of connection so. between one another. Sometimes we call it chemistry, but, but I think yes. there is something else going on that we can receive people that are very heightened in empathy and other ways. And maybe that is why Angelina can cut across and go straight uh, to you and re really reach deep inside of you. Uh, and some people are like that. We call it the it factor. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps that, that is one part of it. You cannot uh, put your finger on what it is, but it's there and, and we can feel it. We can sense it, but we can never describe it. We can never put words into what it is. We just know that. She does something to me that is really special. You're very right about that. <laughs> the song a million, miles. a million Miles. If people allow themselves to feel they're not afraid and they don't get caught up too much in their head and they're just in that um, spiritual, emotional part of themselves. And some people believe and some people don't. But that song just really tore right into me. Mm. And I just weeped. I just weeped. And I know it was regarding my dad's mm. passing. It just seemed like she was speaking to me. She was singing to me. Yeah. And to have that level of personal, I am sitting in the room with her and she's singing to me. It was just fantastic. 
although it was upsetting. But it was fantastic. Yeah. And I was telling James, I was just weeping. And I think that's beautiful. If people allow themselves, the bottom line is the pure talent that she has, her voice, to connect, her ability right. Right. to connect. Like Pontus was saying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I also think that a lot of the people listening to her say stuff like, oh, if you just close your eyes, mm. just hear her. You wouldn't right. be able to, to say how old she is. And, and she, in some ways, I, I think of her as ageless, timeless, yeah. in a way. And, and I'm actually going to invite a friend of mine who has never heard anything of Angelina. And I'm going to let her listen to maybe one or two songs without seeing her for the first time, just to get that feedback. How was it to just listen to her and not see her what, what kind of images did your mind come up with how, how mm. does this person look how old is this person interesting i did my reaction to my funny valentine but first without the images and then with and, and for me that is actually one of the best ways to yeah. to listen to music i've never been into the whole music video uh, i'm more of a listen in headphones in a dark room type mm. of guy. For Angelina, her voice and her music is yeah. so complex and so multi-layered that yeah. I, I really do have to be in a quiet place yeah. and just take it all in to really get that sense of wonderment and awe yeah. about her abilities. James, I want to ask you more on something yes. which I don't really um, know very much about, and maybe others don't know very much about. The way you experience empathy and the way yeah. things happen inside of you, does that spill over into your hour-to-hour -hour emotional world? So, for example, when you hear Angelina Jordan, do you have a, a different type of an extra strong emotional reaction? In other words, does the empathy that you have in an extreme situation, does that spill over into your ordinary emotional world? I could say yes. Because I could say that like you ought to see me weeping when I listen to Angelina Jordan, but I know that every other man who listens to Angelina Jordan is also the same way, according to your podcast. I don't know that I'm that different in that regard, but no, I do. I just start like going, man. Carrie will tell you, all she has to do is close her eyes and I start going, man. <laughs> like seriously, like in the latest video, Alan, yesterday morning, we were just watching your video. All she has to do is close her eyes and my eyes just start pouring tears. I can sense what she's going to do, man. It's like right now, I'm just thinking about it. What I get from Angelina Jordan is that she feels so deeply. And I see it on her lately. The photos that, that she's been taking and posting lately, you almost see it on her, the depth and the dimension on her face. You might even say like, oh, is she sad? Is she depressed or something? What is going on? But it's just the depth of feeling, I think, that she has. They're the depth and the dimension and the many millions of facets that she travels through with her consciousness that she experiences. And that just leads to just such deep experience. And it, it plays on her face as contemplative. It can come off as being maybe sadder or depressed, but it's not. It's contemplative, I believe. And I feel that, man. I feel it so deeply. From her you've got to open your gate to her man and if you want to feel boy she's the one she's the one to help you feel yeah. i know a number of couples at uh, different stages of their life who don't yeah. have children and sometimes instead yeah. they they get a dog together but i think what you two are doing <laughs> by having an angelina jordan in your life is a much higher level james and Harry, thank thank you very much it, it's been great fun having you and it's been very interesting to see how a young couple live together with angelina jordan thank you it was a pleasure too